to the fifth episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the 2020 internal science paper 1 which is physics so the first episode covered section a which is the multiple choice while the second episode looked at question e, b1 so if you haven't seen the first four episodes please check out on our youtube channel question b4 figure b4.1 below is a diagram showing a stone of mass 2 kg that was pushed up a slope from q to r so we have the ground which is this one then we have the stone which is on top here then we have the midpoint then you have t 72 joules of work was done in moving the stone up the slope from q to r question a what is the potential energy of the stone at r so the potential energy at r will be equal to the work done in moving the stone upward because the distance that would have been moved it will be this one against gravity not this distance but this vertical distance so the work done will equal to the vertical distance multiplied by force so this distance moved against friction or gravity multiplied by the force will give us the work done and that work done is in joules so this work done will be the same as in the potential energy potential energy is given by mass times gravity then multiplied by the height so the height is the same we do with moving in the object when we're doing the work then this two gives me the force which is that one hence the potential energy will be equal to the work done in moving the stone up so this one is equal to 72 joules will be the work done so we are saying potential energy of a stone at r which is this one is equal to the work done which is 72 joules so once you do that you are good to go to get this one mark question b if the stone falls through side rt what would do its potential energy be at s the middle point of its fall so the middle point of its fall is exactly halfway so at that point half of the potential energy would have been converted to kinetic energy so what is going to remain is just half of the total potential energy so the question is how much will remain so the remaining potential energy will just be half of the original potential energy so the answer will be half multiplied by 72 so we are going to end up with 36 joules so this will be the answer so we are saying add s half of the potential energy at r would have been converted to kinetic energy hence at s we have 36 joules as in potential energy so once you do this you get the one mark question c calculate height t r so we are looking for this height t r that's the height we are looking for so we know what potential energy is so potential energy is given by mass times gravity times height so at r we know what the potential energy is is 72 joules then what is the mass so we've been told the mass of the stone is 2 kg then we know what gravity is so the gravity is 10 newtons per kg 
that's in the gravity so we have two which is in the mass then gravity is in 10 then we're looking for h which is in the height so we just need to solve for h so we have 72 72 is equal to 20 h then you're looking for h so divide by 20 by 20 then what do we get that one and this one goes so we, we are saying h is equal to 72 divided by 20 which is equal to 3.6 meters so 3.6 meters is the height we are talking about which is the tr once you do this you are good to go and get these two marks then question loma number two of c velocity of the stone just before it strikes the ground so just before it strikes the ground which is in this point just before it hits this ground all the potential energy would have been converted to kinetic energy so it's that principle that we need to use so what is the total potential energy we just found it to be 72 joules as in this case this will be equal to kinetic energy but how do you find kinetic energy so kinetic energy is given by half multiplied by mass times velocity square so this velocity square is what we are looking for so we have one kinetic energy to be 72 what is the mass the mass we are given is 2 kg which is this one so we have half multiplied by mass which is 2 then velocity square so you notice that this 2 and this 2 cancels so we are saying 72 is equal to velocity square so how do you find the value of velocity which is v we introduce the square root the square root because velocity is a positive number we are only going to find the positive root so v is equal to the square root of 72 then when we use our calculator we're going to find that v is equal to 8.485 which is the same as to one decimal place is 8.5 meters per second so this is the velocity we are required to find so once you do this you get the 60 max so thank you for joining me in this episode please join me in the next episode as i look at question b5